Lenny's had a shot of adrenaline because. If you leave me somewhere long enough, I'm just gonna kick back and start having fun. <laughs> Bloody beautiful. Holy, Holy delight! Lenny, do you remember the boat? I'm Elena and this is Riley. And this is our home, La Vagabond. <laughs> <laughs> We've been sailing around the world for the last five years and have recently found ourselves with a stowaway. <laughs> Meet Lenny. Subscribe and welcome aboard. Welcome to Australia. In this episode, Riley had just finished the Sydney to Hobart yacht race and Lenny and I flew to meet him in Adelaide from Western Australia where we'd been having mostly a really good time with my Ohana. The La Vagabond crew were reunited in Adelaide where we'd be staying for a month or so before flying back to the boat in Europe. I'm so glad that this happened when Riley and I were back together. It was absolutely terrifying. Lenny's had a shot of adrenaline because he just went into anaphylactic shock after eating some potato and cauliflower from a curry of ours with like no sauce on it. But all of a sudden he just started choking. He swelled up. It was the scariest thing ever. He turned blue. Um, Riley called triple zero. They were there within 10 minutes. His face is still really swollen, but he could breathe again. But at one point he was really struggling to breathe. Oh, so yeah. We're at the hospital now. We're at Flinders Public. They're keeping him in overnight. This is the third time he's gone to hospital in the last, what, three weeks? Three different eight days. In eight days. Yeah. He's all right. Once we find out what he's allergic to, he'll be better. Driving down the open road <laughs> Breathless oh. by the sea Your beauty overwhelming me <laughs> In the colors of the spring <laughs> Oh, good job. That remote that he's holding is the remote from the Airbnb and it's guaranteed. Sorry, guys. <laughs> it's guaranteed going to be broken by the time we get home. But in the ambulance, it was the only thing that stopped him crying. I ran back inside and I got the remote because they strapped him down. <laughs> So as soon as we got to Australia, Lenny got crouping cough, which is like this dry sounding cough. It's a virus. And on top of that, he started having these choking episodes, which I thought was related to the crouping cough. But now it sounds like he's been having allergic reactions over the top of his crouping cough, which makes so much more sense to me because the last big choking episode he had, there was a cough and then another cough and then the cough got closer together and then he started choking and he couldn't breathe and Riley was in the Sydney to Hobart race while this was happening. My mum and I, we rushed him to the hospital like seriously thinking the absolute worst and he choked again while he was in there but they just thought he was choking on a specific object but now I'm sure he was allergic to something because the choking has lasted for a week now just at random times. He might be allergic to like either bread and potatoes or But we're gonna do a prick test on you soon and we'll find out. If you leave me somewhere long enough, I'm just gonna kick back and start having fun. <laughs> <laughs> it's 11 a.m. We've had a few doctors this morning and the One pharmacist. pharmacist an EpiPen walkthrough. She came and showed us how to use EpiPen and now what are we waiting for? Our script. Once we get that, we can <coughs> finally go. That's been a really What's long, the gonna say? Go boring home, morning. Go back to the boat. Not funny. Cross oceans. Feeling much better today. Aren't we, Lenny? After a prick test, it turns out that Lenny had developed a pretty serious allergy to peanuts, tree nuts, and sesame seeds. 
it was most likely the peanut oil used on the potatoes that caused the anaphylaxis. In the weeks leading up to this, he'd been drinking the odd almond milk, which was causing his throat to swell and choke a handful of times. The most stressful few weeks of my life so far. Seeing him choke and have doctors say it was just because he was swallowing something and that he was okay now, only to have it happen again. He'd been eating peanut butter fine since he was seven months old. I wanted to test him early, but apparently children can build up intolerances in their first few years of life. I'm really glad we found the problem and that it happened on land and not in the middle of the Atlantic. It's funny because after asking the doctor for an EpiPen when Lenny was first born, so that I could have it on board just in case he had a reaction to something, they wouldn't prescribe us one because neither Riley or I have any allergies. This could have been a much worse situation had it happened at sea. Anyway, after another month in Adelaide, making the most of the comforts of land and jam packing in as much time as we could with friends and family, we booked our flights back to Europe. Then things with COVID-19 had really started to emerge and they were talking about limiting flights into Europe. But we knew we had to make it home to the boat or who knew how long we'd be stuck in Australia for. So we set off with enough hand sanitizer to sink a ship. two men and they had a plate full of sandwiches on the check-in counter and Riley thought they were complimentary and he ate one <laughs> and then they grabbed the plate and just and took them to their room <laughs> then we told the ladies at the checkout there Bloody beautiful. Hugo and the team at Sopramar, we love you. This is so amazing. Oh my goodness, Letty, do you remember the boat? Do you remember this? This is our boat. Do you remember? <laughs> oh wow. My plant, my plant's still half alive. It's growing that way towards the sun. <laughs> to the boat after a long few flights but neither of us are feeling too jet lagged yeah no i'm all right they have done an incredible job here i've never seen the tides so shiny i know when we were driving up to it we're like oh my gosh there's the vagabond light it just looks like and i've never cleaned seen cleaned everything they got all the mold off it like she was in a bit of a state after <laughs> the atlantic crossing but it looks better than you so we're so happy and excited yeah. to be back I guess we're also feeling really grateful too, just like to even be able to do this. Um, I think going back to Australia and coming back always refreshes you. You're like, whoa. Oh yeah, absolutely. We have to relaunch the boat over the next week. So there's gonna be a lot of boat jobs and look who's walking. You've probably already seen him, but he is on the go. Lenny, say hi to everyone. <laughs> <laughs> look at his chipped teeth. Oh, he chipped his teeth, you guys. Oh, look at his teeth. <laughs> Jeez, you've come a real gutter there. Uh, 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 oh, who's up? I'm back. <laughs> hey, y'all, mate. Always perfect. Yeah, so I'll be staying here for two weeks, just helping out, do the best that I can. My man, thank you very much. Is that good with you, Pants? Hell yeah. We're supposed to be in the water in the next few days and we have a lot of things to do. And Andre is like 
really, a really, really good help. So we've adopted him again. So today, just today, we've spent the whole day unpacking our suitcases. Andre's gone through the cupboard and brought out all the food and the spices and cleaned those drawers out because they were like really dirty. We had massive piles of washing because some of our seal bags weren't sealed properly. It wasn't our fault, they just popped open. Or well, maybe it was our fault. So we have a lot of washing to do. We're also seeing what other things we can give away, things we don't need, clothes that no longer fit Lenny. We'll give those to the salvos. So yeah, that's been today, pretty much. Day number one, just kind of moving on board and hopefully we can clear this living area for sunset. That'll be nice. So this is the old one. This is what I broke on the crossing and uh, Andre just measured up and got a new one. For those of you that don't know, it's the thing that puts away the head sail. Yeah. It's a safety thing. And we just rigged up a thing that's it's not good for long term, so we're just making our way through the jobs at the moment. A huge thank you to Multi Car Rentals, which you should check out if you're in Lagos. Pedro and his wife are big fans of the show, and so they hooked us up with a ride for the week. Thanks, mate. Get to work. Good boy. Pick it up. These decks won't swab themselves, young man. <laughs> Did you hit yourself in the head? We were pretty keen to explore Lagos because when this was filmed, Portugal hadn't shut everything down just yet. The place has some of the most insanely nice beaches and it was only a 15 minute drive into the countryside full of vineyards and small farms. It really was a breath of fresh air just left the boatyard for a bit to take Lenny for a run mostly and we just found ourselves in this field and there's sheep, there's a sheep dog, there's a shepherd um, and it's just stunning and I'm drawing a picture. I'm really not the best drawer but my friend Yosha said you should just draw even if you're bad so. One thing that we've been thinking about doing for a while which is what we're going to do right now is inviting a whole bunch of people, 10 patrons to the Azores which is a magical set of islands, would you say? Come here, Lenny. Come on. Come on. Lenny. Come on, draw the jaw on the lens. Yeah, the Azores are these magical islands, very mountainous and green, lots of hikes to be had, and we just had this idea, well, Riley did. He was like, how cool would it be to have a get-together in the Azores, do a bit of sailing, hiking, just seeing the islands. But we'll be there at the end of the pandemic. Yes, we're, when everything's over, when we can hold hands and kiss again. Uh, we're going to invite some people that have been with us for many, many years, and then we're going to invite some new people as well. First things first, yeah. if you are a business in the Azores, or you know someone that is, um, and you would like to, for Elena and I, and Sailing La Vagabond, PTYLTD, to um, promote your business. You might be a resort, an Airbnb, a, a, restaurant. a restaurant, a charter business. You might be an old lady on a hill that cooks some um, traditional, traditional cuisine. Send us an email if uh, you think you can help us out in this way and you want to be a part of this adventure. Oh, Elaine has had to run off and grab Lenny. So, uh, where was I? We really want to have a celebratory get together with a whole bunch of people when this pandemic's over. So if that's something that you might be interested in, uh, we would encourage you to consider heading over to our Patreon page and signing up. Uh, there's a bunch of merch there, there's a bunch of um, unseen content, there's, there's all sorts of good stuff there. Plus, this is going to be really good fun. So uh, we've done it a few times in the past and just had a ripping good time. And that's why we want to keep doing it. So yeah, pretty pretty damn excited about this one. Find out if the world does it. It is the windiest, coldest day. It's been raining, but it's been nice. It's moody. Thank you. I've got a new one. I've got a new one. This compliment, but this compliment. Spend our day. The 
Sopramar Boatyard is one of the best boatyards we've ever been to. With a chandlery upstairs, rooms overlooking the yard to stay in if you need one, over 10 sheds with professionals specialising in carpentry, welding, etc. A supermarket down the road and a beach a few minutes walk away for break time, we really didn't need to leave the area. Sopramar is a family run business and the owners are very proud of what they've created there and I would be too. Sail across the island and the coastal shore. The breathing's all water. And breathe you like salt. Riley's underneath the bed at the moment. We we'll like to do this every few months and see what other things we can get rid of. So, yeah, a bit of spring cleaning. We still have so much stuff left over from the Atlantic crossing. Like I bought Lenny so much formula, nappies and stuff like that. So we've got to use them. Keep up the good work, Lenny. When we are in Dubai, her maid gave Lenny this little thing here and he, usually he loves it. <laughs> He's not interested at all. <laughs> So yeah, we stopped off in Dubai for two days because Hamaid always wants us to come visit him. He showed us around in a day. We saw a lot in a day. It was bizarre, actually. The whole city is just it's a new city. It's shiny. It's not really my style, to tell you the truth, but it was fascinating, definitely. He must be so confused. Off you go. This is a disgrace. I think I've seen this advertised on Facebook. They are the weirdest <laughs> things I've ever seen. Buddy, <laughs> look, fish. Hey, <laughs> 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 mate, what are these? Ah, oh, these are uh, fish slippers. <laughs> you want them? Yes. <laughs> Lenny loved it, we took him to this kind of Disneyland place, it's called Global Village, where there's different sections for different countries, and so if you go into Nepal, all the food is Nepalese, all the things you can buy, like little souvenirs and stuff, and it was uh, crazy. Every country of the world was there. Was there? No. No. Definitely not. <laughs> that would be a very big place. No, there's a lot though, there's way more yeah. than I was expecting. Lenny? He's you nearly so Lenny dead. Asleep. If you guys don't remember Hamaid, he's actually a patron of ours who sailed with Riley from Greece to Malta back in 2017. Check out the episode after if you want. I'll link it in the description below. <laughs> it's pretty cold, isn't it? It's freezing. How's Lenny going? What did you find? You found the remote, did you, Lenny? <laughs> Sopra Ma gave us this place to stay in whilst we move onto the boat. It's all still a mess and all that sort of stuff. So they generally give their guests a room to stay in, which is really, really handy. We didn't sleep here though. <laughs> we decided to sleep on the boat. No, I crashed out at about 7.30 with Lenny. Driving, Lenny. <laughs> yeah, very good. Drive the car. Now, this is when things started to get really crazy with COVID-19. They'd begun to shut down a few things and recommended the 1.5 metre distance rule. The country just next door, Spain, were having a terrible time. And then there was Italy, which was another level entirely, with the virus spreading like wildfire. It was time to bunker down and spend as little time as we could out and about, which luckily for us, wasn't anything we weren't used to. Dun, 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 dun. Meet Cunningham IV. 
Highfield sent us a new dinghy and for me it was a total surprise, Riley knew about it, but it is amazing. Serious? Yeah, I didn't know about it. Are you serious? Yeah, not kidding, I had no idea. I must idea. have forgotten to tell you. Yeah. <laughs> How sick is this? It's the new model. My neck's really sore, sorry about that. I haven't had a great deal of time to check it out, but pretty, uh, some pretty retro colours here. Looks good, it'll handle in the water the same as the other one, so that's pretty good. I didn't ask them for these colours, so they've like picked it out. The they just picked our style, you. which was uh, pretty amazing. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you very much, guys. We really appreciate it. Can't wait to take it for a burn. Join us for the relaunch next week and see Lagos with us while well, you can. Thanks for watching that one guys. If you're new here, subscribe, ding the bell, give it a like, do all that sort of stuff. And we really should uh, take a bit of time to thank all of our patrons. Without them, the show wouldn't go on. And uh, we really, really appreciate every single one of you. So thanks a lot.